Welcome to Night Light. Step away from the mainstream and gather around as we enlighten the world and our realities and travel this cosmic journey we call life. Join us as we share with you and provide that beacon that can guide us all to a better way. Explore with us as we examine a metaphysical montage of spiritual insights covering everything from the mundane to the magical, UFOs to unicorns, and everything in between. This is a time of awakening, of sharing and evolving, of spreading our wings and soaring on the cosmic breath of creation. Come and join with other light-minded spirits as we weave our lights together to seek understanding, enlightenment, and with a little luck, some wisdom. This is Night Light, a reminder that you are never alone. Everybody. Welcome to Night Light. So glad you could join us tonight. It's going to be a great show. Before we get going, though, I want to thank Ken Quiethawk for his amazing intro. Uh, please look for him on the uh, Google him. He is a native storyteller, and he and his wife have been preserving this, this amazing tradition for uh, decades and decades, and it is an amazing way of preserving history, cosmology, and the stories of, of creation. Uh, for, for generations yet to come. Uh, much better than the written word in my, in my philosophy, and um, probably if spirituality was taught the same way, uh, there would be a lot more spiritual stuff going on out there. I have an amazing uh, author with me tonight. I have Jonathan Hammond with me, and he's written a book called The Shaman's Mind. And I want to tell you a little bit about it, um, and this is from the book, to learn to think like a shaman is to attune yourself to a magical spectrum of infinite possibilities, unseen truths, alternative realities, and spiritual support. When a shaman likes what's happening, they know how to make it better, and when they don't, they know how to change it. This book teaches the reader how to align and transform their own mind into one that sees the world through the lens of the indigenous healers of old. Jonathan is a Maui-based teacher, energy healer, shamanic practitioner, and spiritual counselor. And before beginning his work in holistic health and spirituality, he had a career as an award-winning author, actor, sorry, award-winning actor, appearing on Broadway and on television. He's a graduate of Harvard University and the University of Michigan, a certified master teacher in shamanic Reiki, and the advanced graduate studies advisor for shamanic Reiki worldwide. He teaches classes in shamanism, energy healing, spirituality, and HUNA at the Omega Institute for Holistic Studies and around the world. In addition to his background in energy medicine, Jonathan completed four years of training at One Spirit Learning Alliance, that's OSLA, in New York City, and was ordained as an interfaith minister in 2008. He's currently a faculty member at OSLA, where he teaches shamanism and Interspiritual Counseling, and he is the founding leader of OSLA's Monthly Shamanic Circle. So, welcome to the show, Jonathan. So glad you're here today. Aloha. Uh, from Maui, it's so great to be here. Thank you. Well, th uh, I'm so glad that we, we managed to get our time straight here. Um, actually, one of the things that fascinates me about anybody in the spiritual field, and I have to always ask the question, um, how did how did Hawaii find you? How did Hawaii find me? Well, I had um, the good fortune of coming here many times, and I was already when I first started coming here, I was already certainly a spiritual person and uh, a Reiki practitioner and uh, even a shamanic practitioner. 
And I never really thought, I just enjoyed Hawaii, but I, I never really thought to look here for spiritual influence. I didn't really know of, other than, you know, what you hear about aloha. I had never really heard of any um, uh, of, of the spirituality, and I had never linked shamanism with, with Hawaii. So it just wasn't something that was on my radar. And then I had a series of experiences with the land itself. The, uh, um, that, that were really unmistakable and, and beautiful and mystical. And, uh, and they kept happening. I mean, I would see, uh, I would see pictures in the stars. I had a, uh, which I read about in the book, I, I had a visitation on the, on the volcano with, uh, with what, can I, what I can only call great spirit or, or uh, the source or God or creator. Um, I would have experiences with animals here, um, and still do to this day. I, there, there isn't a day that goes by uh, since I've moved here where I'm not, I'm not in direct contact with, with uh, swimming with a turtle. That's an everyday experience for me. And I, in fact, the other day I was high-fived by a turtle, and I didn't even realize what was happening until I felt something uh, uh, graze my hand, and it was a turtle. Uh, so oh, I've, wow. I've had, uh, uh, yeah, I've had really crazy experiences in Hawaii, and that made me start to look at: is this is this land trying to tell me something? Is it trying to show me something? And um, and that's where I I uh, discovered Ho'oponopono and uh, Huna, and what I found in in uh, that practice Ho'oponopono and in the Huna philosophy was. Uh, sort of a, uh, a synchronization of everything that I thought I knew about healing all in one place. And it was, I, I didn't know, I, I was a, a spiritual practitioner for many years and thought I had uh, sort of come up with my own thing, you know, based on, based on um, uh, you know, other paradigms and, and other schools of thought, but it had really become my own thing. And then when I started uh, looking into uh, the Huna philosophy, and, uh, and Hawaiian spirituality, what I found was, oh, I was tuning into something that someone had actually already um, uh, established in Polynesia. Uh -huh. And it was a, a crazy realization. Um, and that began, that began a real uh, affinity and love for uh, and deep course of study um, in, in uh, the, the Hawaiian shamanic tradition, uh, which really has, has led to, uh, to, to my work currently. Well, I think one thing that, that, and I told you before we started, that, that I had a friend that said, oh, Huna, that's, that's just New Age. And I, and I said to him, it's New Age if 3,000 years old predating Christianity is New Age. And I think that's something that most people don't realize, that Huna is, is ancient. It's been, it's been out there and gently practiced for thousands and thousands of years. And well, yeah, if people you don't can... know. You know, go ahead. Sorry. No, uh, it, it, you know, what... people don't. It, sorry, I'll go ahead, up. Barbara. Well, uh, well, okay. If you could um, explain Huna, if you could explain Huna to us, then maybe that would help. Yeah. Well, even but even predating Huna, even predating uh, Hawaii, uh, the the there was there was once many. This is millennia, but there was once a huge landmass in the middle of the South Pacific called Mu, the continent Mu, M-U. Some people call it Lemuria, uh, uh, but the Hawaiians wouldn't. The Hawaiians would call it uh, the Mu continent. And the people of Mu, the Mu people, who weren't really a people, they were, they were, um, uh, they were said to be kind of divine beings, sky beings. And, uh, and the folklore is that, that the Mu people, these people from the stars, from the Pleiades, were actually attracted to the water. In the, in, in the South Pacific because, because there was just so much water, such access to water. And water is considered the DNA of the planet. And so these, these high beings were, wanted to essentially infect the water with love, with aloha, with, the, with that God molecule. And because everything is dependent on water and water flows through us, it was at that time on the planet as the earth was waking up that the, that, uh, the Mu beings came and brought this God molecule and infused it into the water. Now, there's a, there's a, so, so the idea is, is that, that this place in the middle of the South Pacific is the source of esoteric wisdom the world over. 
There are other theories that this, is, that this place is the recipient of esoteric wisdom from the world, and we'll never really know. But, this, but uh, there is a sense when you come to Hawaii that, that the land itself uh, is very sacred and has a, has a mana, has, a, has, a, um, has its own power and its own consciousness. And that is very much um, um, the, the tradition. And so it, it's from those ancient people uh, that uh, that this esoteric wisdom, which which as we get into what Hune is, you will have heard most of it before. It's so universal, and it's been said that it originated in this part of the world. Absolutely, and I think what I love about it is it is so gentle, and it is so sweet, and it is so linked to nature. It should feel comfortable and familiar to anybody who looks into it. That's right. That's right. It, uh, it's more that we, we've heard this stuff, but then we don't apply it. Or we're cynical, or we're socialized away from it, or we're worried about money, or whatever. But if we actually allow ourselves to, uh, to align with the, the, uh, the, the ways of being, the ways of thinking, uh, that the indigenous healers... Uh, worldwide and I, you know, I've worked with shamans on three different continents and what was fascinating about when I discovered the Huna philosophy uh, and Hawaiian shamanism was that that all the different uh, uh, cultures that I worked with they were all thinking the same way they were all their their uh, outlook their worldview was similar whether or not it was South America whether or not it was Central America uh, the Far East different practices, different cultures, but essentially shamans tended to think the same way. And the problem that I had in studying shamanism was that, you, it was that there was a language problem, there was a cultural problem, and I, I was trying to figure out, I can see that they're all thinking the same way, but what are they all agreeing on? And it was in this philosophy, and Huna, this po Polynesian uh, um, the tradition, is a philosophy more than anything else. And it's a philosophy that helps us think like shamans do, think like, like all indigenous people, at least the ones that I've, I've worked with, tend to think. And so it's about using the power of mind, the power of intention, the power of the present moment, the power of love, the spiritual power, our inner power, the power of nature, and all of those things to bring about change, to create uh, life, to heal. And, and it's a very, very simple philosophy, but we tend to not be disciplined enough to follow it. Or we follow it on good days when we want to be spiritual, and then we forget about it sometimes, and it sort of, it sort of dilutes it. <laughs> so we'll talk about all the, all the principles of Koda, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think also, you know, you and I both use the term shaman. You want to explain a little bit about what a shaman is as well, so that people get understand where we're coming from with it? Yeah, so a shaman is, a, uh, is named that by the community. And a shaman is essentially a healer. And what is, what is he or she a healer of? The shaman is the healer of relationships, the re relationship we have between our mind and our body, between ourself and others, between, between others and others, and between everyone on the planet. And the ultimate goal or intentionality of the shaman is to heal in order to provide and support the stewardship of the earth. And so in sh the shaman worships or uh, worships, reveres nature and looks to nature as a template to teach the shaman how to be and so the shaman can teach others how to be because it's in our, in our most natural state. Because when you think of, if you think of nature, what, what do I mean by that? If you take a forest, and you leave that forest alone to do its thing, that forest is going to continue an endless process of growth and creation, right? It's just going to keep, mm -hmm. it, it's just going to, it's going to want to just keep going. And we as beings of nature are not separate from that energy. And anything that wants to keep growing and creating, essentially there has to be an intentionality underneath that. Well, anything that wants to keep going like that is fueled by love. And so the whole thing, the energy of nature is the energy of love. And so to align with nature, to align with that force of growth, growth and creation is to align with love and to follow the intentionality of love or of aloha. 
and so we we uh, we look to nature. We also, when we look at nature, we see a completely interconnected, interdependent, interdependent, uh, holistic uh, a cosmology where everything fits together and everything is supposed to be there and everything cooperates with each other, and that is our true nature. And so, to to revere nature, to uh, to worship nature is to is. is is because nature provides us a template to teach us how to be. And the shaman is the one who understands that and helps people return to their nature. Well, I think that uh, one, there were so many things that, that just absolutely struck me as, as beautiful and, and appropriate for, for the times in which we're now living. And one of them was that, the, you know, you have the power within yourself to make changes, to make alterations. And, and I love the, the part about, you know, when a shaman likes what's happening, they know how to make it better, and, and when they don't, they know how to change it. Um, mm-hmm. it, it. It sort of brings the responsibility of your life back home to where it belongs with the individual. Yeah, Huna, it, it, more than anything else, Huna is about taking 100% responsibility for yourself because, your thoughts, the very first principle of Huna says that the world is what you think it is. The world mm-hmm. is what you think it is. So that means not just your experience of the world is based on how you think about it, but that the world itself, that reality itself is created by your thoughts, which means that what's going on between each of our individual ears is in some way, to, in some way contributing to and creating the reality for the all. And so, be, and so we take 100% responsibility because we're either adding to the mess or we're adding to the love and we're adding to cooperation. You know, I was once asked on an interview, you know, sort of at the end of the interview, they said, well, what can we all do? What can we all do to make the world a better place? And I said, could everyone just clean up your own mess enough so that it doesn't <laughs> spill into, over into another person's experience? Could we just do that? Uh-huh. And we're not really yeah, I, even there, and that is a very low bar, you know. Well, this is true. This is true. But it, it's so many people want to blame others for for things that are going on in their life, and and um, I think that one of the one of the phrases that you used frequently in the book was "energy flows where attention goes," and it makes great sense. You know, if you're focused on something being miserable, you just are adding to the miser- miserable bi- miserable ability of it. And, and yeah, well, looking... and that's actually that's actually one of the one of the principles. Uh, the principle. Uh, so the first principle is uh, the world is what you think it is. We'll get to the second one, but the third principle is that. And these are um, these are unique translations of Hawaiian words. And so the third principle, and, and which has been translated as energy flows where attention goes, is from a Hawaiian word called makia. And so what, that, what, what this uh, principle is getting at is that where we place our focus and our attention elicit energies that bring about, that create, that bring to us the nearest physical equivalent of whatever we're placing our focus and attention on. So essentially, what you're what you're uh, what you're placing your attention on with consistency is inviting in energies to create that thing, and that's why and, again we're taking yeah go ahead sorry. No, I was just going to add to that, and and so many people think of what are the negative things, what could possibly happen, what could go wrong, and and by focusing on those aspects, you're almost you're almost inviting those aspects in instead of looking at the positive, which are the wonderful beneficial, beneficial things that could happen in any situation and, and, and drawing that in. So I, I, if people just remember the energy goes where your attention flows, it, it, it can help them tremendously. Well, a revolutionary idea, and I, I wish that I had come up with it, but this is my Hawaiian teacher, Serge Kahili King, who, who really is the person who wrote these um, uh, or who translated these principles. But he says, he says one of the things that we can all do that's actually very difficult is to expect the best, to actually go through life expecting the best. And he says if you do that, 
even if you don't get the best, it's going to be better than where you are now. Yeah. So, and there's an yeah. acronym, right? And there's, a, there's an acronym yeah. that, that we use in, in, in HUNA, which is EWOP, E-W-O-P, and it means everything's working out perfectly. And so, so the idea is, is that, that, you know, you are really lending your attention and lending your view, aligning your beliefs with the idea that the world truly is, that life really is happening for you. And so when those things in life happen that we don't particularly like, rather than, rather than uh, shake our fist at the sky over them, it's about when those things happen, aha, that is a light of a new awareness. Because on some level, if something has come into my life that I don't like, a seed of that lives in me. Because the world is, I create the world based on my inner world. So if I'm, if I'm experiencing something in my outer world that I don't like, that's a reflection of something about me. And that's not about blame the victim. That's about aha. That's about a, the light of a new awareness. And that is a very shamanic idea that it's through the darkness. Uh, it's through the darkness that we actually enter into uh, the new way of being. In Hawaiian cosmology, the day begins at sunset. And the manifest day is, uh, is born out of the darkness. So it's out of the darkness, out of the inner world, out of the difficulties that come light, that come uh, of awareness. And so, so if we can start to look at it that way, we, it, it, be, it all of a sudden becomes this reality where you can't really make a mistake. Imagine a reality where you really can't make a mistake. Because it's just about, like, if things, if for whatever reason you missed the mark, it's just about, like, you didn't know. You didn't know what you didn't know, and, and, and here's your opportunity to, to learn it now. And, and that keeps you on your path. And it's by oh, saying, absolutely. you know, a lot of times, yeah, like even when I'm, when I'm working with, with someone one-on-one, -on -one, um, uh, you know, doing counseling, and, uh, you know, I, I, I'll say something, and I'll say, does that, does that resonate? And they'll say, no, not really. And then I'll say, well, why doesn't it resonate? And we're on to it. We're on to the next thing. I've just turned that no into a yes, into a, a, a further way of, of exploring the moment. And this yeah, is what we I, can do in every moment. I think that, you know, when things have, uh, when I was younger, I was a lot different. But now when, when things sort of don't go the way I anticipate, it's like, oh, this is great, this is a lesson. You know, what am I looking for here? There's something here for me to learn from me, to make me a better person. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't always say it quite that calmly, but... <laughs> but of it, course. <laughs> but but, but there, there are moments when, when you, get, you catch yourself and it's like, wait a minute, I didn't anticipate this, what is this teaching me? And, and always it's a positive. I mean, in my opinion, there are no negatives. So, so it's like, okay, so what am I taking from this? How am I going to be a better person because of this? And, and it, it works out very well. Again, I am called often a Pollyanna, and I claim it, and it's okay. But it's made my life a happier place. So um, I wouldn't well, change well, it for one, the world. One of the, one of the, one of the famous, uh, famous kahunas that, uh, that I've studied um, and lived on the Big Island he talked about uh, dwelling in the positive polarity or dwelling in the negative polarity. You know, in Huna, it's so simple. Because we are, we are organizing things that we are creating the world with our thoughts and our intentions and our beliefs, then that means that we are focused, and because energy flows where attention goes, we are focusing on what we want, and we are mm -hmm. not focusing on what we don't want. And it's really that simple. And it doesn't mean that the doubt won't come up. Oh, oh boy, the doubt will come up. And you, when the doubt mm -hmm. comes up, when, you, when, you're, when you're trying to create the new thing, the doubt comes up and you say, thank you very much, I see you there, but we're still going this way. We're still yeah. going towards that thing that we want. We stay in the positive polarity. And it's not about, um, it, it's, uh, it's not Pollyanna. It's, it's more about the, um, I understand why people would say that about you, but it's more about um, staying in creative energy. And, and, um, and the positive polarity, love, is the way in which we further create because the whole thing is based on love. Well, and you used a really important word there too, and that was creative. And and in in my philosophy, 
I believe that, that creativity is, is the key to just about everything. And the more you pour creativity into your life and experience it in different, different aspects, different ways, you're creating a richness around you that is just going to bring joy and love into your heart. And, and yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a living testimony to that. You know, there's no way I'm proof that it works. Um, yeah. No matter, it, it's, it's, it's something that, that, you know, especially when you're a spiritual person, you know, there are times when you just know things and people don't understand why you just know them, but you just do. And that's one of the, I just know this. And, you know, you can't shake me from it, but you, you do your best. But, but this is what works for me. And this, this is, you know, been my focus for a long time now. Um, we did hop ahead to the, I did want to go into the seven principles. So, Sure. Go back to one and, yeah. Yeah, and work we'll our way one. through them. And, uh, just to piggyback on what you just said, just to piggyback on what you just said, you know, people have asked me, um, you know, what, how do you live a spiritual life? How does one live a spiritual life? And my answer to that is the creative engagement that we have in the moment, that we are uh-huh. creatively engaging with what's happening. That and 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 that's it. That's it. But but that we are actually aware of what's coming up on the screen of our awareness and what are we going to do about it? How are we going to create it further? You know, and that, that's so much about, about this work. And it goes back to the first principle. So the first principle is that the world is what you think it is. So not just your experience of the world, but that, that the world itself is created by your thoughts. So if you think of, if you think of um, uh, reality as a, a screen of awareness, and onto that screen of awareness, we project our, our thoughts, our beliefs, our history. And that awareness, reality itself, subtly shifts and changes based on what we project on it. So we are all participating. And, and, our, and what is inside our inner world are, is participating on the projection of what reality is. And because, uh, because the inner world of so many people has been so negative, has been so mired in greed and separation and fear and isms of all kinds, that reality has literally gotten sick, which is what we've experienced in the last, in the last year and a half. And, and, yeah. um, and so it's about each of us individually making a choice and knowing that our inner world, that what we, that, that we are, uh, our inner world projects onto reality and creates reality. And so we each individually do our part. If, if we're, if we're uh, signed up to be part of the solution, the capital S solution, we do our part without ever leaving our homes of, of contributing to that collective reality with positivity, love, non-separation, reverence, humility, et cetera. Yeah, I've often, I've, I've told lots and lots of people that I believe that the time out that the universe gave us gave everyone the opportunity to be more creative within their lives and discover where their true purpose lay. And thousands of people have done that, and it's really quite profound to see the changes in so many people's lives because they took the time to go inside of themselves and to creatively find a new way of expressing and manifesting within their reality. And it, it, I, I think, I, I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I know millions of people have died, and I, 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 I'm, I, I am saddened by that greatly. But at the same time, millions of people have found a new direction for their lives, and there is joy and celebration in that awareness as well. That's absolutely true, and you know, as someone with a large private practice, I can tell you that 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 is the experience I've had with every single client in the last year and a half. That if there was something that they were to wake up to, if there was a relationship they were supposed to leave, if there was a career that they were supposed to shift, if there was a job they were supposed to leave, if there was a geography they were supposed to move to, um, that this was the time when they did that, and you know, and that that narrative. Because, because uh, the evolutionary narrative of, of this time on the planet, you know, when you think of uh, if COVID did indeed come from bats, which they believe it did, bat, bat medicine from a shamanic perspective is about death and rebirth. And while we, we might not like the, the, the death at the end that, that, uh, that we're scared of, but I've actually heard it's kind of pleasant, uh, in, inherent in death is rebirth. And so this has been a very rebirthing time. And so a lot mm-hmm. of people are feeling it. 
and it's not a narrative that you, if you turn on the, you know you turn on the, the evening news that's not a narrative we're being presented with we're just being presented with the scary ones and we're not being presented with with um, with the fact that this is for for so many people who, who have incarnated at this time to be a part of the solution and that they are waking up to that even if you look at the younger generations, particularly the millennials and the and the uh, generation before them, these kids, you know, they've been by the patriarchy, they've been called lazy and they've been called entitled. But actually, these are people who actually have just looked at what's been handed to them and said, "I don't want to do it like you." And these these groups of these these groups of young people ha are organically ecologically minded. Organically, they came in with that. They incarnated with a sense of uh, ecology. They certainly didn't learn that from their elders. And so there is this, uh, this huge um, uh, population of people that have incarnated at this time. The, the Hopi called it the Rainbow Coalition, this time mm -hmm. when, when the big shift would happen, when, um, that, that there would be all of these beings, all of these light workers, so to speak, that would, that would usher in this new way. And this is the time when when uh, when healers are being born, and healer, healers are are, are um, uh, you know are are really just stepping into that, and you know and all of that, and it's a really beautiful time. But at the same time, there is also a major death of the old ways, and the old ways are are just the things that we all know: the the, the illusion of separation, dominion over nature, uh, profits over people. Uh, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, diminished freedoms of, of any kind, and those those are those are dying out, and it's going kicking and screaming, but they are dying out. And this new popular, and certainly anyone listening to this to the, this broadcast, they these are the people that are um, who have incarnated at this time for a specific purpose, as has been prophesied. The Maya, the uh, the uh, Quechua people, uh, the Hopi people, uh, the the uh, um, Hindu people. They talk about the Kali Yuga, like there are so many um, uh, uh, different indigenous traditions that speak about this time on the planet, and that's where we're going. And that's why this, uh, sorry, I get excited about this stuff, but that's why uh, th <laughs> there's so much esoteric wisdom available now. That's why you can oh, yeah. go pick up my book and read a book about, about uh, um, Hawaiian, Hawaiian spiritual philosophy, because that's by design, and the spiritual intelligences know what they're doing. And they brought all this material out for the masses because this is the time most when the masses need it. Absolutely, and to me, it's it's. You know, I <clears throat> well, I've been confined to my home now for going on two years, but I I have not felt imprisoned. It feels as though um, the world is my oyster, and you know, I I creatively, you know go outside and I, I talk to I talk to the world through the podcast and you know it's it's like my world expanded with all of this it didn't it mm -hmm. didn't constrict it expanded and um, somebody said to someone asked me you know your your radio show has a, a strange name and and I said no it doesn't it's an it's nightlight and, and they said but what does it mean and, it, and I said it means that that this is a place where you can find light. And if it applies to you, mm -hmm. take it in and use it for yourself. And if it doesn't, switch channels. But, you know, it, it's, it, provides, it provides a beacon of sorts. And, and the audience that, that, that we have just is, is illustrative of the fact that people are looking for answers now. They're, they're truly seeking understanding and, and cosmology and they're, they're, they're seeking a way of finding their own inner truths and, and expanding upon them and nightlight is a place where they can and that's that's you know kind of been you know my mission for the last eight years and will continue certainly but I think that that these are times when people can find magic inside of them and I use that term a lot but I, we all have magic inside of us I, I compared I compare us to cars that, you know, that have all the whistles and bells and everything. And it's like we were, we were given um, an avatar, if you will, uh, a, a body 
that has all of the bells and whistles of, of you know, the, the, the master shift that is carried within us. And it's just a matter of looking, well, we didn't come with an owner's manual, unfortunately, but, but, but seeking for those portals within us that takes us to those magical places. And they're there. They're there in everyone. Everyone is capable of this. And that's what excites me about this time frame. People are actually finally starting to look for those bells and whistles inside of themselves. Yeah, and they really are there. And um, uh, one of the thing I, things I love about, uh, about the, uh, this philosophy is around the power of thought and that, that, that the power of thought is, is considered a kind of magical tool. The power, you know, in, in Huna, we consider choice, choice to be a magical power. Because if we, if we are uh, um, using our thoughts, our intentions, our beliefs, our actions uh, to actually um, uh, to effect creation, if, if that, those are the only tools that we need, our love, to effect creation, mm-hmm. then that means that we are indeed, we are indeed capable of, of magical things. And part of the, the journey toward wholeness, uh, that so many of us are, are seek or are, are called to follow is about that uh, realization, about the fact that we have forgotten that we are indeed these magical beings capable of really amazing things. And uh, so absolutely, it's so, it's so important, important um, that people realize that, that what you're lending your attention to is creating the world. And so you have to pay attention to what you're paying attention to because what you're paying attention to is, uh, is creating energetic blueprints that are becoming matter. And, and, be, and this leads us to the second principle. You, you talked uh, earlier about you've expanded during this time, during, during COVID, uh-huh. and that really speaks to the second principle, the second principle of HUNA. So the first is the world is what you think it is, so you create reality with your thoughts. The second principle is that there are no limits. There are no limits. That means that it is a limitless universe. That means that separation is merely an illusion. So you can think of it as one giant organism through which we each individually experience the one giant organism. If that's that's too esoteric, you can just think that, that we are all individual waves in the ocean that can't separate ourselves from the ocean. So that means what you heal in yourself, you heal in the all. What you can, do, what you uh, uh, cultivate in yourself, you contribute to the all, just by doing your own work. And any way in which you are you are stuck, or you're mired in in low self esteem, or you're mired in addiction, or whatever it is, and those things happen, they do. We mm-hmm. have to realize that that the whole world is stuck with that. Because we are, we are inseparable from that. And it, it, it's a beautiful idea, but it, it really is about taking 100% responsibility for your own healing. My, my teacher, Serge King, he says, if you want to heal someone, think of them and you feel good. Think of them and you feel good. And, they, and what, what, what he's getting at is that, is that we are contributing to the one giant organism through our cultivating our own love, our own goodness, our own focus and intentionality. And that's what that principle is getting at. And just like nature, because we, we, we talked about that the, the shaman is emulating nature, what we see in nature is, a complete, is, is complete interconnectivity complete holism, everything working together. And that is the, if we can know that we are centering, we are each individually centering, centering ourselves in that same oneness. And that's the reason why you can't make a mistake, because everything is working together. There is an order to all of it. Because there's only one giant thing happening and the entire thing moving towards growth and creation. So that's just the way to think about it. But it really is about about you thinking about that you 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 personally contribute to the collective with every action you take, every thought you think. And that's that principle. It, 
Yeah, it's, it's, I love that. I, 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 and then, of course, we have the attention goes where the energy goes where the attention flows or the other way around. And, and, and that's right. Energy flows where attention goes and also uh, uh, attention flows where energy goes. So, you, you know, if, uh -huh. you, if you turn on the spotlight, spotlight in a room, all the energy will go or all the attention will go to that. So it works. It works uh, there's a, an opposite cor uh, corollary as well. But, yeah, and that's just about placing your uh, – place, just being really careful about where you're play, placing your focus with consistency because that is, that, is, that is the part of manifestation. See, what happens is, is that people, um, they want to manifest something, and so maybe they'll do a spell, maybe they'll think about it, and then the doubt will come in and, and, or, 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 they'll, or they'll get busy. And in HUNA, uh, in HUNA we say mixed thinking gets mixed results. Uh -huh. Mixed thinking gets mixed results. So you focus on this thing with consistency, and, and, and that's what brings it into being. Yeah, I think the element story. of... Go, go ahead. Well, I, I was going to say the, the element of consistency is the important part because, you know, it's sort of like sometimes somebody will say, well, I'll light a candle for them and they'll be fine. And then the reality is it, they'll, be, they'll be finer if you are consistently thinking about them getting better as opposed to lighting a candle and handing the responsibility over to something else. So that's right. That's right. You know, it, uh, I, I tell a funny story about uh, when I, I knew that I wanted to move to Maui and I wasn't sure how to do that. And, you know, it was a huge move. And if you, if you read anything about moving to Hawaii, you, you all, the first thing you hear is how expensive it is. And, um, and for years, literally years, there's a show on HGTV called Hawaii Life, and it's 19 seasons of watching people buy property in Hawaii. And I watched every episode of those 19 seasons like three times, and I would watch oh, wow. people buy property in Hawaii, and I would watch how they would think, and I would watch when, when, they would, when they were told what the price of the property was, how that they would smile, and how that they, you know, and I, I focused on the process of moving to Hawaii and, uh, in that way, because energy flows where attention goes, for years. In fact, even the, the, the afterword of my book, before I had moved to Hawaii, I, I say, that the very, one of the last things I say in the book is, Hawaii is my destination. And I didn't even know I was being manipulative because I was, I was making it. I was writing a book where I'm saying, I'm, I, that's where I'm ending up. And, and that's what happened. So it's about that consistent focus with removing the doubt. So if you, if you remo remove the doubt, it's instant manifestation. But mm -hmm. a lot of us can't remove the doubt, uh, you know, but, but if you can just know that it's there and not give it clout, not give it legitimacy, and refocus. Important. And I think so many people just, you know, don't put the effort into in, into the the focus, which is so important. And and it's 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 so much a part of of everyday reality of of your thoughts. Just you know, there there are many times within a day where people are. are I think a lot of technology has gotten in the way of this kind of work, to be honest with you. You know, cell phones constantly, tablets constantly, computers constantly. If, you, if you're alone with your thoughts, you can do a lot, a lot better work, actually. It's that, and it's also, I think that, um, I think one of the things that we just struggle with so much in Western culture is, is uh, this idea of assimilating. Of, of the need to be like everyone else, to fit in, the, the, the what does everyone think of me part of us. And that uh -huh. is, um, um, and if, if you think about like, like what that does, it, what, what happens is, is that that's the goal, to assimilate. And what happens is, is that people who, who wake up and go, you know, I, you know I, I'm assimilating and I'm not happy. I'm fitting in. It all looks right. I'm going to the right parties. I have the right bank account. But it doesn't feel right. And, and they've been following the, the rules of the collective. And then what happens is they go to a shaman, you know, or they go to a healer, and they say, I'm, I'm following all these rules, I'm doing everything right, and I'm not happy. And the shaman says, don't follow those rules. I have another set of rules. And my rules say that, the, that what's true is only what's true for you. And that you're not, you're not to, to assimilate with everyone else, but you're to follow your own inner directive. 
You're to follow your own heart. What animates you? And that's very different than assimilating. And, uh, and so that's a real recalibration that, that everyone on the spiritual path needs to make, is to stop caring what everyone thinks. Because if you're doing it right, most people won't understand you. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I, I, I tell people and that, and all the that's time. That's why it's so important to do that. Yeah, I tell Sorry. people all the time that the universe always provides you with what you need, not necessarily what you want, but but what you need is always there and provided for you. And um, and and a lot of people because they're because they spend so much time assimilating, they don't actually they haven't actually acknowledged what it is that they want. Mm-hmm. They they just. They, they've been they've been given a set of dictates by family, by society about about what money is, what men are, what women are, and and uh, and, and what what work is, and and uh, and the, the, the sort of Protestant idea of work productivity, all of those things that, that we're we're born into a collective unconscious with all of these these rules and ways of being that are that are, are uh, formulaic and that are spoon fed to us. And we're taught if we follow them. And when we turn on television, it tells us how we're supposed to look, how we're supposed to think, what our money's supposed to look like, who we're supposed to like, who we're supposed to look like. And, um, and to live a spiritual life is, is to say, I, I'm tuned into that enough to know what's going on, but then I follow my own, I follow my own in, in, inner directives. Exactly. Because your own inner directives, you know, and, and it's just so important that we do that. So important that we do that. And um, and it's it uh, it's a um, it's an act of uh, even rebellion in some way, because because everyone is so mired in what everyone thinks and fitting in. And and um, and ultimately, one of the one of the principles that Huna talks about that truth is a highly subjective thing. The only absolute oh, yeah. truth is that every everything is. That's the only absolute truth. Everything is. Uh-huh. And everything else is just something that someone made up. And so <laughs> you decide what is true for you, and you follow that. And, you know, I've heard narratives, you know, about the COVID. I've heard narratives that are, that are anti-vaccine, that are anti-COVID, that are blah, 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 all these different. And what I have found is, is that if you adhere to any narrative with a sense of I'm adhering to this narrative because it's the right one for me, that – you're fine. Oh yeah. And if you're if you're the person who's you know if you're the person who says I'm not getting a vaccine and that's what you believe and that's what you know because the world is what you think it is then then and and I know the science people are, are going crazy when I say this I know that but <laughs> but I, what I have found over and over, I know they are they, they, they you make them crazy but what I have found over and over again is that is that then I have other clients who are very I want that vaccine I want to get on with it I that, that's the right thing for me and God bless them that's the right thing for them. Yeah. And, and so much of so much of this time on the planet, and because there are, you know, I mean, I think that the last administration did, did in a way, a great service because they basically said, truth is up for grabs. Truth is up, <laughs> yeah. we, you know, we're, we're, we're letting you know the truth is up for grabs. And what that actually helped us with is to decide for ourselves individually what's true for us. Mm-hmm. And the easiest way to figure that out is we're, we're – What's the thing that's taking you towards growth, creation, and love? That should be your truth. I agree. Totally. So let's go to four. Yeah, uh, that's a Hawaiian word uh, called Manawa. And that's about the present moment. That is translated as now is the moment of power. So now is the moment of power. So the, the, uh, the, what you're thinking about, what you're making choices about, remembering that the universe is limitless, remembering that you have the that you have the power to elicit energies through what you focus on. You can only do any of that in the present moment. So now mm-hmm. is the moment of power because now is the only place where you can do anything. And now is the only place where you can access power. And so in in uh, Hawaiian uh, in Hawaiian cosmology there are no past or future tenses of verbs in the Hawaiian language. Everything only relates to the present moment. So they think of all time existing in the now. 
So if you go, if you go to, from this perspective, from a Huna perspective, if you go to a psychic to get a reading, and the psychic is telling you this is what's going to happen in the future, they're not doing that. No, no one can do that. What they are doing is they are reading present moment energies that, uh -huh. if unattended to, will lead toward that, uh, will lead toward that, that future outcome. But it's exactly. only about the present moment. And, and this is also about because, because there is only uh, the now, you can really let go of the past. You can really start over any time you want to. You know, we're all, we're all carrying around uh, the past, and we're all mired in the shameful things for, for the mistakes that we made. And it's only in the now that you can go, you know what, I didn't know what I didn't know, and I was actually trying to do something. It just wasn't the best thing to do at the time. And, uh -huh. and I just need to look at these past actions with compassion, and I, I need to, uh, and I need to let them go and to come up to date with myself. And that I don't, in this present moment, I don't owe anyone anything. And it's just about, and it's just about where am I now? Because who I think I am now is who I am. That's the Huna philosophy. Who I think I am now, that's who I am. And we can start over in any given moment because this is the only place where we can access power in the present moment. Absolutely. And, and you know, if most people adhered to that philosophy, I think it would be a happier world for sure. Yeah. You know, if, um, if, if two people are together in a room and they are um, free of future fears and past regrets, they'll become friends. Uh -huh. Yes. Perfect sense. The, Perfect sense. Yeah, the, the the now is a the now is a is a very very friendly place. It's what we do to the now, and even if you think about if you think about memory, because we we talk a lot about memory in in uh, the Huna philosophy, you know where is it? It it, it, it doesn't exist anywhere. It, it, things exist as a memory. Where is the past? It's nowhere. It's nowhere. Yeah, and that means. That, that we can actually we can actually reinterpret and reframe and recreate the past right now. So if if there you know if you have a um, if you were you know had a major betrayal in your life, you can look at that as I have this major betrayal in my life and I'm supposed to be sad about it for the rest of my life, or you could in the present moment decide that major betrayal was the light bulb that made me go never again. And I yeah. see all the things that led to that betrayal, and right now I'm making the choice where I'm seeing that as the most wonderful thing that ever happened to me. Difficult as it, it, it might be to get there. And you can only it, do that it, right and now. And it is. It, it, it truly is. And yet, you know, there have been lots of times when somebody is, said to me, you know, what would you change in your past? And, and my response is always absolutely nothing because it made me the person I am today and I really like me. So. Yeah, yeah and people, um, people get, there's needless suffering over the idea that I should have known what I, what I didn't know. Yeah. I, I hear this all the time that I, I, if, I, if I had only known, well, you didn't know, so stop it. Yeah. See that you know, and it, it's so important that, that we, we uh, give ourselves, cut ourselves that slack. Serge King talks about blanket forgiveness. You just forgive it all. You just forgive it all and, and start over in the present it. moment. Yeah. Good. yeah. Great advice. And and it, you yeah, know, beautiful. It, it, you make it you you make it sound simple, and and for many, it's, it is a difficult journey, but it's one that's worth traveling because it does give you a sense of power and a, and a sense of direction and a sense of, of, of being able to um, take charge of your life at this point in time instead of, you know, continuing to be influenced by things that you had no control over and, and you, you carry them as a weight, which you don't have to do. That's right. You know, uh, um, shamanic, uh, uh, shamanic healing is, uh, and shamanic philosophy is simple but it's not necessarily easy. <laughs> and, um, and, so, and, so, and I do want to emphasize that because, because it can be very hard. You, you have to be really ready to, to forgive yourself you know, or to forgive another. You have to actually work at, um, it, you know, if you want to you know, have your thoughts align with a positive polarity 
and you have an entrenched pattern of negativity that, that comes from how you were treated as a child that, uh -huh. that is so old that your negative outlook feels almost spiritually true, that takes work. That takes work to get out of that. That takes healing to get out of that. You know, so, so you know, I, I, talk about, I talk about the ideals, but the work is, wow, I, I just, this is this, this belief about myself. I'm, I'm aware of it. It's not very nice. And right now it's not going anywhere. I'm stuck with this one right now. And I got, I got, I got to keep working on that one. And that, that's, part of, uh, that's part of the path of healing. And, it, and, and there's nothing else worth doing. There's absolutely so nothing true. else worth doing. Yeah. That's, and everybody, everyone has things that they, you know, that, that it's appropriate to review and to let go of and to heal and to, you know, give themselves a, a, a greater power to move forward in time. But um, going back and taking a look at this stuff is a very good idea, and, and it does give you wisdom on, on, on many new levels because you, you, you have, you know, the... the you have t time and accumulated wisdom in that time to be able to see the fact that, that in many cases, in most cases, you had no control. You were doing something that that's you right. learned from, it, and that's important. And it, it's so important that we know that. We, we, um, uh, one of the things that, that we work on a lot, and it's, it's a major part of the Ho'oponopono that I teach, the, the healing practice that I teach, is really around that that what our earliest experiences are in life, how we were treated, how, uh, how society treated us, if, the, if we were the object of certainly abuse or neglect, but also just indifference, misunderstanding, mm -hmm. even a sense, that we're, a, a sense that we're different, we personalize that and create a sense of self and a way, a, a way of seeing ourselves in relationship to the world based on some of that stuff. I remember working with a 70-year-old woman, and she recalled a look of self-consciousness from an ashamed father at something she did when she was six. A look. Oh, my gosh. And she registered the look. And she remembered thinking it, it was in his disdain, in his, his, his a judgment of me, that I formed a sense of self. And at 70, she was still working on it. For, and, wow. and she could only trace it back to a look. And, like, that's how susceptible we are. And so that's why, we, you know, when I talk glibly about, uh, about uh, aligning with the positive polarity, uh, polarity, yes, that's great. But we may very well have entrenched patterns that say, that's not my world. That's not me in relationship to, to the world. And, and if you have that, you have work to do. Because... You mm -hmm. have uh, there are aspects of you that that um that are in a mis that have learned a mistake. Because we are we are all a, a spark of divinity, we are all a spark of it. Because uh, there are no limits, which means that we're all part of the one universe. That means we're all part of the one God. And so, so if we have learned something about ourselves that is antithetical to our best interest, that causes us to block ourselves from our are moving toward our growth and creation, we have learned a mistake, and it's uh, and and we have forgotten our divinity. What do I mean, divinity? Perfect, whole, deserving, lovable. We come in with that, and then we forget mm -hmm. it. And so, yeah, and, and so aligning your mind. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to say that's one of the saddest things about about coming into to this this plane, this dimension, uh, in, into uh, physicality is the fact that, that we are perfect and that we are divine and, and that, that almost immediately the culture works at, you know, making us forget that. That's right. You know, and it's also, I'm not going to badmouth organized religion, except I will say this. If you think of the major Abrahamic religions, so there's mm -hmm. this off-planet God, usually a male, has good days and bad days, and judges, mm -hmm. and uh, and which 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 essentially, in uh, and whether or not you follow that paradigm or not, what we all learn is that the authority that authority lives outside of us, and that we are to be judged, and that we are to earn our keep, 
and that there may be a time after we die where we actually are free, but we're not now. And, and that paradigm keeps us enslaved, not only spiritually, but economically, uh, politically, etc. cetera. And, and, um, and so it's so important that we, uh, that we look at, it, at that for our, ourselves, that we, we reclaim our own individual authority over ourselves as, as the, uh, in alignment with, with the, the divine consciousness that resides in each of us. Absolutely. And that's a big thing. To, it's a big thing to hold on. It's a big thing to own of, of, for yourself. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> and that yeah. is something to to work on constantly. And and the reality is that that you know happily sometimes the older you get, the the more wisdom you you gather, and and the more you begin to be uh, cognizant of the fact that there is the power within you and the connection to the divine, and and. And you are you have that aspect that seed of the divine within you, and and it's there to use and connect with, if only you reach for it. Yeah, you know we're not going in order, but that's okay. It doesn't matter that the principles don't necessarily have to be in order. But this speaks to the sixth principle, which is mana, and that that mm-hmm. uh, the Hawaiian word is translated as all power comes from within. So that means in an infinitely powerful universe, that powerful infinitude converges at the point that you call you. That means mm-hmm. I have all the power and you have all the power. And uh, one of the words, one of the translations of the word mana, which is where this uh, principle comes from, is authority. When you think about authority, there's that word author in there. And so mana, our mana, our, our, our inner authority is about the ability to author our own lives and that the authority does not ever live outside of us. And, uh, exactly. and our own inner our, our power does not live outside of us. Even if you, think, if you think of the nature of power, power over something will only lead to retaliation and fear, right? Power yeah. against will only, uh, will only lead to resistance. But the power to empower, the power to empower, that's how we know we have the power because we can give it away. Mm-hmm. And that resides in us. That's how we know that it's in us. So, so to not withhold from the world, but to, to come from a place of wanting to empower the other is the only indication that you know that you have the power. And so it really turns this idea of what does everyone think of me and someone else Someone else has the clever ideas about who I'm supposed to be and what life is supposed to be, and those things are outside of me. And it turns that on its head, and it says, no, 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 that, that comes from you. That's for you to decide. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's, a, um, a, again, a big thing to hold, a big thing to hold. Because, and it's also, saying, it's also saying someone who doesn't agree, they have the power to have that per- perspective. Everyone has all the power. As relates to them, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And and that's yeah, that's it's a, it's a, and and knowing that that you have it inside of you and and it's a matter. I I don't understand why more people don't don't embrace this philosophy because it makes such perfect sense. Well, because um, let me say this, you know, he, healing and resistance. Healing and resistance, what I have found over the years, I've done this for so many years now, they, they're two sides of the same coin. Why the resistance? Because that, that means you'd have to actually take responsibility for your gifts. That means you'd have to leave that relationship. That means you'd have to change. That means you'd have to show up for yourself. That means you would have to feel the discomfort of, can I really do this? I don't know that I can, but I'm going to put myself out there. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's so many reasons why. Why, why people um, don't, don't claim their own power, financial reasons in particular, because, because that, is, uh, that, is, um, uh, that is to risk. That is to risk. To put yourself out there is to risk, and people are, people are risk-averse. And so, uh, so that's a big, uh, big reason why. And, and just to say, you know, um, so often – People think, oh, if I follow this, then I don't have to be scared. No, you have to be scared. 
you the only way to the only way to know that you're following your soul's path is 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 to follow the risks to yeah. follow the things that say oh if you're going to go from here to there you're going to need faith are you up for it that's the soul's path that's how you know you're on it but there's also a joyful part of it too um yes there there you know the fear is there too but I have found sure. that, that people who are truly on their path have a, have a great deal of joy inside of them. They, they have enthusiasm. They have joy. They have celebration. And, and yes, they have difficult times, but they still have joy and celebration. And, and uh, I think that's one of the, the ways that, that, you know, that, that I, I kind of spot check myself from time to time, you know, is this, still a celebration. Yes, it is. Okay, you're going the right way. Um, do you know where you're going? Absolutely not, but I'm going to have a good time going. So. Well, you know, it's <laughs> funny that you say that. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, let me say we skipped over, we skipped over the principle before mana, which is aloha. And aloha mm -hmm. is not only about love, but it's about happiness. It's about celebration. So aloha is, is translated as, as to share life with another to become face-to-face -face and share life with another. And in the sharing of life is happiness. And so aloha is considered the only ethic, the only rule that we adhere to. Is what we are doing ultimately bringing us happiness? Is love's perspective present in this thought, in this belief, in this intention? Is mm -hmm. love's perspective present? And so, so yes, but, and sometimes you have, to, you have to feel risk and fear to actually get there, you know, to get to the celebration. But, but that's always the goal. You know, if you think about, uh, if you think about that, that the energy of nature, if you think of nature, nature just wants to keep experiencing itself. It just wants to keep going and growing. And anything that wants yeah. to keep going and growing, there's got to be an intentionality underneath that. And the only thing I can think of that wants to experience more of itself is love. Yes. And so, so aloha is, is essentially the, the organizing principle of the planet and the, the found, a foundational a principle to how to think like a shaman. Because uh, uh, essentially every action that we take, every thought that we think, every present moment that we, that we engage in, we are looking for where's the love. And... Most of I have found that, that you know truly unconditional love doesn't need the reciprocity; it just needs the experience of itself. Now that's unconditional love. That's that's a tough. Yeah, one. It, it's a tough one because I think that um, I think certainly a lot of people who would be listening to this podcast, I think that they they're already so good. You know, these are all, you know, anyone who's listening to this, these are people who want to be better in the world. They want to contribute. They want to like, you know, they want to be good. And I think, uh, you know, I read about in the book, I read about the too good person. And what I mean by that is the person who, who, uh, who shows up in love and doesn't expect anything in return. And mm. while, while unconditional love is, is certainly lovely, it's not, it can't be a way of life because then you're going to give from depletion. You're going to give from lack. So one of the, one of the um, uh, things that Serge told me about aloha, he said, if aloha is given and not returned, there is no further obligation to give it. So we are really looking for reciprocity in, in our relationships, that, that our output of love is equal to our input. And that's, that's the translation of that word aloha. It's about sharing. It's about the sharing of love that creates happiness. And so it's important that we, that we, we look at that, uh, we look at that as well. Because I think sometimes people, people just strive to be good and they can forget themselves. Oh, Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Definitely. So, so what did we skip? Uh, I think we, uh, the last one is, the last principle is, uh, is a word called pono. And Pono, mm -hmm. the, the uh, translation of this, uh, of this principle is that effectiveness is the measure of truth. Effectiveness is the measure of truth. So that truth is only about what works. 
And if it doesn't work, it's not true. <laughs> and I love this principle because it's saying, it's saying there's no right way to do anything. It, 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 you're only looking for the, for the one that works. And, and, and it invites in creativity and invites in the idea that if for whatever reason, whatever you're working on is not coming to fruition, just go back mm-hmm. in those principles again. Remember that, that you, you create the world with your thoughts. The world is what you think it is. That's the first principle. Remember that mm-hmm. you are connected to everything, that there are no limits which means that there is a solution to every problem. That's the second principle. You remember that, that where you place your focus and attention, invite in energies that bring about change and creation. That's the third principle. Energy flows where attention goes. You remember that it's only in the present moment where you can do anything, so get in it. You remember to include love's, that's, that's the uh, fourth principle. You remember to include love's perspective, aloha. That's the fifth principle. You remember that you have all the power within you to do whatever it is that you want. You have all the power and so does everyone else. That's the sixth principle. All power comes from within. And then the last principle, principle says, if you've done all that and it still doesn't work, you get to try something else. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that's, that's a lot what, of steps to go through. So I think that you know, by the time you get to, to the seventh principle, it makes a great deal of sense. You know, I've tried all the yeah. channels. Yeah. <laughs> what, I, what I love about that principle is that it's really saying, you know, you know particularly people who follow, um, you know, follow spiritual teachers or spiritual paths, you know, there's such a sense of am I doing it right? You know, or you're learning a meditation te- technique and am I doing it right? Am I a good student? And, mm-hmm. and, um, and th- th- that last principle is really saying it, it only has to do with whether or not it's effective. It, 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 you know, it, uh, my, my, my Huna teacher says, if it works, it's Huna. If it works, it's Huna. And so he would include anything in, in, in the Huna philosophy as long as it's effective. And mm-hmm. effectiveness is, is the goal. Because what's the point of any, any uh, esoteric or rarefied wisdom unless it's actually going to affect our lives? You know, and so, and I also love love that this principle is included because it's also saying all of these things that we're talking about, uh, uh, awareness in the present moment and love and, and in, inner power and harnessing your thoughts, they actually, these things actually do work. And they work oh, yeah. so much that we're actually going to, we're actually going to say, if they don't work for you, throw them out. That's how confident we are that they work. <laughs> I like that. I really do like that. Um, In in your book, you talk about the three parts of the self. Yeah, yeah. Which I, which I found, which I found fascinating. Yeah. So, um, you know, all uh, you know, uh, uh, Freud and Jung, they they had three aspects of self as well. The contemporary psychological models do, but many, many, many indigenous cultures uh, uh, talk about three different aspects of self. And um, uh, and they're essentially the, the the physical body, the body mind, the the conscious mind, so the thinking mind, the one that makes choices, and then there's this kind of higher self, this thing that that um, that uh, that seems to come online when we're inspired. And so, in general, if you think of that, the conscious mind conscious mind, the one that is showing up for this call, that's listening to this, that made whatever choices you needed to make to get out and to get on this call, the conscious mind, even more than the high mind, is in charge. Because the conscious mind is the one that can actually think the right thoughts, create the right beliefs, show up in the right way and all that. That's the conscious mind's job. And the unconscious mind is the part of us that aren't, that may be, that the, certainly the parts of us that run our body, beat our hearts, all of those things. You think of the unconscious mind as that which has memorized things, either genetic memory, so the memory to beat your heart and to, and to, uh, and to keep you alive. But the problem with the unconscious mind is the learned memory. Because we may have learned things, and we're back to those entrenched patterns, those, those entrenched beliefs. We may have learned things about ourselves that if they are not unlearned, they, they, they are antithetical to our best interest. It, you can even think of the unconscious mind almost like a, like a, a computer uh, program with very specific software implanted in there. 
And if the software isn't going to get you where you want to go, you got to change the software. And so, so the conscious mind is uh, another way to think of the conscious mind is a kind of new parent, a new loving parent that says to the inner child, "You have memorized these mistakes about yourself. You don't look right. That you'll never, you'll never have enough money. That you're, uh, uh, that you're not smart enough. That." That, uh, uh, that you'll end up alone, that you're unlovable, whatever those things are. And the conscious mind is the one that, that, decides, and, that d- decides and reparents this, this, this child self. This is the essence of Ho'oponopono. And the high self then brings about and inspires us toward doing that. And when, when, we, when we align with love and we align with our own healing, meaning our conscious mind uh, um, sends love, sends healing to our body, to, our, um, uh, to the parts of us that hold the memory. The high mind comes online and says, oh, there's healing happening down there, and, the, and, 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 and sends grace, sends love, sends healing. So you think of the, the, the three selves, the high mind, the conscious mind, and the unconscious mind aligning when the conscious mind makes the choice to love, to send love to those hurt parts of us. And when we do that, that that's what, uh, what brings all three selves online. And that's the essence of, um, the essence of Ho'oponopono. That, that forgiveness process is about, is about healing those parts of us that are entrenched in the unconscious, that are antithetical to our best interest, that, are, that, that won't allow us, in, internal beliefs that won't allow us to hold who we actually need to become. Does that make sense? It, it makes great sense, and, and you, your three phrases that I that I picked up on and I just thought were fabulous was, <clears throat> "I love you, please forgive me, and thank you." Yeah, there's one more. I'm sorry. So I, I'll just break them down because there's so much misinformation about this practice. So, okay. so um, in in Ho'oponopono, we use uh, four phrases, and so the conscious mind the new loving parent sees the child who has a mistaken identity about themselves, at least about some subject matter, a mistaken belief, a low self-esteem, a I'm unlovable, a I'm unworthy, or uh, I, need, I, I can only soothe myself with food, or I need to be in this addiction, or whatever it is. And the conscious mind uses four phrases to speak to and, and connect with this hurt child. I love you. So I'm the, I'm the new parent in charge, and I'm telling you that that was then and this is now, but I love you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry is another way to, to think of I'm sorry is I actually see you. I see your suffering, and I'm sorry that you feel that way. See, it's only in the naming of a problem that, that we have the freedom to fix it. And I'm sorry uh-huh. is about naming the problem. You're actually hurt. You're actually hurt. This happened to you. You, you feel badly about yourself. And, and, and it's, very, it's a very powerful thing to just name it. And the I'm sorry is I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you feel that way about yourself. And then please forgive me is please forgive me for all the times previously where I let you believe that about yourself, where I even invited in people who would help you believe that about yourself for all the ways in which I didn't take care of you, for all the ways in which I didn't talk you out of this misbelief, please forgive me because I'm the new parent now and I want you to, to get on board with this new way of thinking. And thank you is to say to this child, thank you for this mistaken uh, adaptation, this mistaken belief, and thank you for going along with me now. And thank you for aligning with my view of you, my I love you view of you. So I love you. I'm sorry because I see you. Please forgive me for all the times when I didn't take care of you. And thank you for going along with me now, for letting this, memor- this memorized idea, this memorized idea of some, something about yourself that is antithetical to your best interest, thank you for letting that go. And that's the process of Ho'oponopono. And it's a self-healing. Too. I mean, it's, I, I think what people have to understand is that you do not wave a wand and Mm-mm. make something happen. You lead a person through this self-awareness and this healing process. That's right. That's right. And it's not and, just once. 
it's it, it, it's not just once because these these patterns held in the unconscious mind, you know, um, they don't they don't go away after one time. They're about you know one of my Hawaiian teachers talks about incessant ho'oponopono, meaning that if you're doing it right, you're doing it all the time. You're not necessarily saying the phrases. But the idea is, is that there is this part of you that has to relearn something that it may have learned when it was four. And so it's not going to get it after one, one time. It's going to have to be shown and told and I love you and, and you know, many, many, many times before it, before it really starts to let go. And, and that's the work. That's the work. That's, that's the healing well, work. It's sort of like a stream that that is flowing in one direction and that in order to change the direction or the the bed of the stream you have to start to carve another channel and it, it it's over and over and over until the water begins to flow in the new channel and let go of the old channel i love that that's that's exactly what it's like that's exactly what it's like and and it's just that that um uh, because because the 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 uh, the habits of thought, the habits of belief, are so old, it it really does take this this as you said I love that metaphor this sort of recarving that we're going in this direction now, and I know that you think that you're unlovable. I know that you think you're unworthy. I know that you think you're untalented. I know you think you don't look right. I know you think you're going to end up alone. I know you think you're never going to have money. But I'm going to guide you toward a new belief. And I'm going to do it over and over and over again with love so you can let this go. Because the reason why you even have that misbelief is because love was withheld. Love is withheld from you. That's why, that's why you have a belief in there where, where you can't find any love in it. So we're going to give love to this problem in order to let it go. And that's what a, the what a wonderful, that's What a freeing um, experience for someone to go through. Because, you know, we all have those little pieces here and there that have to be worked on. I, I don't, if, if we were If we were perfect, we wouldn't be here. There would be no point in incarnating. So, you know, <laughs> there's always something that's to right. work on. <laughs> Well, and, and, you know, and if you think about it this way, if you think of, uh, when you think about the high self, or, or even you think of spirit beings, the easiest way to understand um, spirit or the divine or God or the energies is just that there are loving beings hovering around the planet who have, who, are, who have so graduated, who are so wise, and they just want to help. They just, they just hover out around the planet and they wait to help. And what do they help? Anyone who's moving toward love. If you're not moving toward love, they're just quiet because they can't do much with that. Mm -hmm. But if you are actively moving toward love, you, you elicit all kinds of help. And so the idea of doing a practice like Ho'oponopono, to extend love to yourself, is to invite the divine love, spiritual love, to invite it to come to you, and it will. And that's a fundamental difference in, um, in shamanic cosmology. In shamanism, we don't reach toward the divine. We act love. We intend love. We, uh, um, we believe love down here. And the divine comes to us. Because we are in, when we do that, we are in harmonic resonance with the divine love. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 well, so it, 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 um, it, yeah, go ahead. It's opening a portal to that. It's, it's unlocking a door that we have the key to. That's right. You know, if you think of, let's say, this is just an example. Let's say you are, I, I, I had this woman a lot when I lived in New York. So let's say you're a woman, 35 years old, and you learned from mom a long time ago that if you're 35 and you're single, that's, that's it. It's over with for you. You're not going to, and that is a belief that you have. And you are, you are pretty sure that it's over for you and that all women over 35 end up alone. And if that is a belief that you hold, then as much as the spiritual intelligences would love to drop the guy right next to you on the subway, 
the spiritual intelligences can't work around a belief where you wouldn't be looking for the guy because mm -hmm. you have a belief that says that can't happen. So that that belief that you that you have have created blocks love, and the spiritual love can't do anything to to um uh, can't override that. And that's why it's so important to tend to what you're thinking because the world is what you think it is and the spiritual intelligences can only work with you based on what you are willing to receive based on what you believe is possible for you. And that's right. why to, to – yeah, and that's why to um, – to, uh, uh, to to inv to give yourself love, self love. Self love is the thing that invites in spirit to do its thing. So there's, there's a um, there's a, uh, a a word in in Hawaiian called aloha ma, and the aloha ma means self reflective love. And those um, those those mu beings that I talked about, those other worldly uh, uh, spiritual beings from from the stars in some way infected the highest ideal of love. And what they put into the water was this aloha ma, that the highest ideal that we could come to is a self-reflective love. Because if, if you can, if you can uh, um, uh, produce that or create that in yourself, that aligns you with divinity. That aligns you uh, with the big love. And who does that? Your conscious mind. Well, and we stop in the to think about love, love is is like a magnet, you know. And if you are love, love is like a if, magnet. Yep. Yeah. If you are radiating it, then you are attracting it to you. It's that simple. That's right. That's course, right. It's a lot harder to do, but it, 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 the philosophy is there. Um, that's right. It, it, there's a like, practice. Uh, there's a, 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 a practice that that is about building your aloha. And the practice is, uh -huh. is, um, is so simple. It's so simple, but it's so deep, and it's called blessing. And so what happens when you, when you are practicing aloha, when you're blessing, is that when there's something that you come across that you want but that you don't have, someone who's got the job you want, someone who's got the, the amount of money that you want, someone who's got the body that you admire, someone who is, uh, uh, who is successful in some way, that, that rather than other yourself from that from that thing that has the thing that you want you bless them and you and and so whatever it is that you want if you want more money you bless you bless people with money and you bless everything that money created and if you want better health you bless everything that's healthy and if you want a success as a, as a film producer you bless the film producers who are where you're supposed to be and what that does is that aligns you with the same energy as the thing that you want. And if, you, if you're not blessing, if you're withholding and you're being jealous and, you're, and you're, uh, you're, you're othering yourself from that, you're saying, I'm not that. But when you bless, you actually are in the energetic. That's why, that's why love, love just uh, um, uh, brings you toward that thing. So we consider that a magical practice to bless what you want. It's so simple, but it's so deep because it's aligning you energetically with those things. And when you don't bless, you are actually othering yourself from those things that you want. Yeah, that makes, makes sense? sense. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it absolutely does. And, and your, your book is, of course, amazing and um, worthy of been read two or three times before you get all of the good stuff out of it. Um, I, was, I was so blown away with it. I just don't understand why this concept is, is not more powerfully at work within our reality because, because certainly it has the antiquity and it has the, 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 the perfection of it is so obvious. And it, it, it just, well, to you me, know, I, it, I have to say, Barbara, yeah, I have to say, you know, I, um, uh, I, so it's not about my, it's not about my book. You know, it, it's about this, it's about this philosophy. This 
If uh -huh. you work this with discipline, this works. It really yeah. works. But but the discipline is the discipline is is part of it. And you know, I wish that there was a better word. Discipline gets a um, you know, gets a bad rap. You know, but it really is about tending to your thoughts. It really is about mm -hmm. always moving toward, expecting the best. Everything's working out perfectly. Moving in that in in that direction, healing the parts of you that just can't believe it. You know, and and um, uh, it really really does work. And um, and and you know, I uh, I taught this material, the material for my book in in classes, and it, this is such an odd experience. But I've had someone say, at the end of the day or the end of the two days when I've taught the class. They said, why don't they teach this in schools? I've heard that yeah. every single time that I've talked. And it's just because, because it is so kind. And it is so about working with energy, which we know is there. And it's so about that, that thoughts are things that create. And we know that. But it's about actually harnessing that. We know that love heals. We know that you can only do everything in the pleasant mo present moment. We know that, that, that the, the, uh, the ability to create your life can come only from and through you. And we know that there are a million ways to do anything. And yet we don't actually align with those ideas enough to make them work for us. Well, because we're either I, cynical or scared, you know. Well, I, and also I think one of the main reasons why it probably hasn't spread is that because the work has to be done by the individual and most people want somebody else to do it for them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really, yeah, I mean, it's really true. It's really, you know, it's so funny when, when I, um, I remember the last time I taught this material, I said, so, you know, I taught, taught about Hawaii and some stuff and I said, okay, I'm going to teach you the, I'm going to teach you the seven principles. Now, before I teach you this material, let me just tell you all right now, you're not going to do it. And, of course, they all looked at me like, like you know. And I said, I'm saying that to you because, because this is, this is going to be the part, that this is going to be with the rubber where, where the rubber meets the road because you're going to hear this stuff and you're going to be inspired and, you're gonna, and it's going to resonate with you because it's basic. Uh, it's kind of a basic truth that, that resonates so deeply that most people just just understand it. But it's about working that program. And it's about real, allowing yourself to risk wanting, to actually risk wanting and going after what you want, to actually allowing yourself to yearn for what it is that you want. And, and, you know, when you think of um, uh, vulnerability, to, to live a spiritual life is to be vulnerable, to want something, mm -hmm. to want something for yourself that isn't currently there. That's so vulnerable. To pray, it's so vulnerable. To open yourself to, to create, creating something or to, or to bringing something in your life that would really mean something to you, it's so vulnerable. And it's so important that, that, that we open ourselves to that and we allow ourselves to want. And in the wanting and in the yearning is the risk. And if you allow yourself to risk, then you, you invite in the idea that in order to get through this risk, I have to have faith. And now you're on your soul's path. Yes. No, I, um, there have been times in my life where I have known I, I have known something works to the point where I would bet the ranch on it even though I don't have one and mm -hmm. have found so many times saying to somebody, this works, practice it, work with it, it works, it will, it will get you where you want to go, it's, this works, and, and, and see them look at what, whatever it is I'm suggesting and, and, and I can almost see their thoughts. Nah, that won't work. <laughs> or, yeah. or I'm not about to take the, take the chance to put the effort into it. I think when, when the individual has to put the effort into it, where they have to commit themselves to, to work on themselves and make something happen for themselves, that that's where people lose the faith. And faith is, a, is, is so important. And you, you, you mentioned faith. Having faith that if I do this, 
that that something magical will happen in my life. Not not always knowing what it is, but but knowing that magic is on its way to you because you have the faith that it's going. It's like Tinkerbell, if in Peter Pan. <laughs> it's exactly yeah. the same thing. If you believe, it happens. Well, more more likely than more likely than not, it, it, it really does, and then and then um, uh, it, it really does. You know, let me say this too. You know, we're talking a lot about manifesting for yourself and working on yourself and all of that, and that can feel a little a little solipsistic. That can feel a little selfish. So let me say this too: the purpose of allowing yourself to yearn, to allowing yourself to want and to going after that, to actually creating an abundant, full life, is, is ultimately a, uh, an altruistic act for all beings. Because when you actually get some healing, when you actually come into abundance, when you actually feel fullness, what happens is the inevitable organic response is to pay that forward to the world. Yes. And so, it, it, and 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 um, and it's so important that people that that people recognize that that it's about getting yourself so full that you can't help but, and the inevitable response will be that you will want the minute that you, when when the divine's hand touches you when you actually work with with principles and and manifest something into being, the inevitable response the organic response is to tell everyone how you did it. Uh huh. And that that and it's so important that that we remember that 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 this is about paying our good fortune forward, and that's why we're doing it. Well, yeah, I mean, our that, personal that, responsibi- yeah. our our personal responsibility this lifetime, this this journey on on the earth plane, this lifetime is is to learn to grow, to heal ourselves and in that healing the, there is an overflow which touches other people as well but but then you're giving from excess rather than draining your own physicality it, That's it's right. a, it, it, it's a thing with 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 mediums I you know when I talk to them a lot and and you know I've done mediumship work too and when I, I am always charged by it and and people have said but but I'm so drained when I do it and it's like well, then you're using your own physical energy as opposed to channeling universal energy or cosmic energy or the energy of the divine. And, and if, you, if you are bringing that other energy through you, you just get charged up, up, up the wazoo, literally. Sure. And, and sure. It's, 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 it's look at where the source from which you are drawing, which is so important. And this work is if you're bringing the divine aspect of love through you and it's enriching your life of course it it will spill over to the people around you and hopefully they'll ask how you did it you know (laughs) and then you can that's right you know you know if you if you think of you know um why was shaman and shamanism developed i mean shamanism is uh is shamanism shamanism is an embodied path it's not an ascendant one there are ascendant uh-huh. or transcendent aspects but it's about being in a body and and if you think about what why was shamanism developed to find food and medicine to uh to uh, uh figure out figure out how to live well how to heal how to uh to uh manipulate the weather to to uh, to meet your to meet needs, you know it's a very it's about living well in a body. And um and um, and to and also to experience the pleasures of the earth in a body. Mm-hmm. You know it, and 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 if you think of what what healed actually is, you, you know someone asked me once, what does healed look like? What do you mean healed? And I said healed is when you have set up your life in such a way that you're enjoying the moment most of the time. And that is just about, about um, being, being on this earth and, um, and allowing yourself all the sensual pleasures of the earth and doing whatever you, and, 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 and once, you, once you've experienced that for yourself, um, and helping others do that as well. And, and 
the divine intelligences only want to help us do that. And the more that we oh, yeah. do that, the more the more godlike we actually become. Yeah, it is, it is an amazing experience. Um, I have a sister who is a shaman, and uh, in the Peruvian tradition, and uh -huh. um, it's 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 amazing the peace that she has within her because of the work that she has done. And, and you yeah. know, it, it, it's, it's and, and, I, and I love the fact that, I mean, there are, you can teach shamanism, but to actually become one, it is a title bestowed on you. It's not when you claim yourself, which I love that too. I mean, my sister would never call herself a shaman. Um, yeah, me neither, me is, neither, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's shaman, I call myself a shamanic practitioner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think that there's, a, you know, there's a cultural piece to it too, and and um, that that I think is just important to honor. And um, you know, and and spe you know, speaking of that, I do think that's important to talk about. You know, there there is a lot of talk about, uh, particularly in contemporary shamanism, about cultural appropriation. And you know, and I'm a Caucasian person, having written a book on on uh, uh, on the Hawaiian shamanism. Although I really do try to universalize it, but it's still it's still that perspective. And yeah. you know, I can only say that I think it's important that we remember that that second principle: there are no limits, which means that that everything is connected, and really there is only one mind. And uh, and. The reason why, the reason why, as we as we talked about the seven principles, the reason why they they resonate with you individually, even if you haven't heard them, is because truth is truth, universal truth is universal truth. You feel it, and we're, we're mm -hmm. wired to feel truth, you know. And so I think it's important to remember also that as much as I, I'm very sensitive, in fact, I even um, some of the um, proceeds of my book go to uh, uh, the Hawaii Wildlife Fund. Uh, so I wanted to certainly cover my bases in terms of, of uh, cultural appropriation. But that said, I think it's important to remember, too, that we kind of don't have time. That, you know, that, you know this, all of this indigenous this wisdom, all this esoteric wisdom, this is only within the last 50 years that, that it's even become available to the masses. And 50 years is probably a little long. And we have to assume that the, in spiritual, the, the spiritual intelligences of the universe know what they're doing that we that we all have you know something like hawaiian shamanism or even something like like um uh you know a buddhist philosophy you know that you know that would be a rarefied thing that you could even find if you go back 75 years and now yeah. it's on the internet you know and i think <laughs> that, that, that you know and i think it really is and you know and i think it's so important to 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 acknowledge that that maybe that's by design and um, and you know the fact is is that you know the the we need the Hawaiians. The Hawaiians don't need us. You know, and the, you mm -hmm. know we need the, the the Peruvians. The Peruvians don't need us. And I, I've never had the experience in working with um, in working all the different shamans that, that I have. Uh, I've never had the experience where they taught me something, and they said. Make sure that you tell everyone that I taught you this, or don't teach this to anyone. I've never, I've never experienced that. I just experienced a sense of you're here. This is true. This is, uh, uh, I'm, my, my intentionality is to heal. I don't care what you do with it, but do something good with it and try to yeah. get it right. You know, that, that's the yeah. only thing I've ever heard. You know, so I, I think it's just important because I know that that's a, um, uh, a sensitive thing, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, for some listeners. And again, I'm, I'm very, um, I, I am very sensitive to it, but I also, uh, I also um, had the realization when I came across this wisdom that it, it just, it felt like it's too good not to share. It's just too oh, good absolutely. not to share, but, you know, you know, and that's why, well, and, and that's why I sort of have to, you know. And you, you have also, I, I love the fact that you've got all the Reiki work and, and even the Cherokee body work um, mm -hmm. that you've been certified in. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like, you know, you decided I'm going to be a shaman and yada, yada, but, but it's, it's, 
What is it? You know, you know the, um, <clears throat> how do they put it? You, you know the tree by the fruits that they bear. And, and obviously, you know, you're bearing wonderful fruits because, you know, you, you obviously have come from some wonderful trees. And, and it just is, it's, I think that true people on a true spiritual pathway never intended to do it. They just turned up there and they look back and it's like, holy macro, look at everything I did. It just fell into place unbelievably. And here I am. Yeah. And you know, it, it, it's so interesting too, because, you know, I have, I have, you know, I, I, I've had so much schooling and so much study and, um, you know, something like, something like Reiki is the same thing in different traditions. There's a, a version of quote unquote Reiki in the Huna tradition. They just call it something else. The, the chakras, there are energy centers that are universal that, that every culture that I have worked with, they all, they all agree on, but they call them something different. Absolutely. Cherokee body work is, 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 is so much about like dialoguing with the body about actually uh -huh. uh, that, that each part of the body is conscious and there are, there are, um, I learned the same thing in Huna, you know, so, uh, so it's really pointing toward, um, uh, it, it's really pointing toward, uh, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, you know, and, and, uh, oh, gosh, yeah. and all in terms of healing, all roads are leading to Rome, you know, and, and, and th that's very true. Well, you had a, you have a wonderful, um, when dealing with the chakras and stuff, you had your 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 um, <clears throat> you spoke about uh, casting stones, and I've done gem casting um, for the last fifty years, where yeah. you know people took a handful and they cast the stones, and I, I I gave them information from it. I loved what you had, and of course I've done the chakra work too. So. Um, yeah, no matter no matter what the modality, you know, there is a there there is similarity between all of them, which I find just fascinating. And, and the more I read, and the more I learn, the more I, I realize that in many ways um, things have come through us, come come to us, and through us from the universe. Um, in all different places and ways, I, I did a deck of cards called the Cosmic Deck of Initiation and found that that the same patterns had been channeled in other places, and then they turn up in in crop circles as well. So that so that there's there, there is definitely an energetic out there trying to give us information and uh -huh. and putting it through as many different modalities as they can possibly do, so that it's some point we put it all together and we have one of those great aha moments and everything falls into place. Mm -hmm. It may not be that's this right. week, that's right. but you know. <laughs> no, but uh, that, 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 that's absolutely right. And that's, that's absolutely right. And I, and I feel that universality too uh, uh, in so many different things. And you know, and let me say this, just to, to go back to the uh, Hawaiian thing, uh, the, the Hawaiian paradigm for a moment. The one thing that, that if there's a takeaway for the listeners, in terms of healing, if you, if you can just remember this paradigm of that your child memorized something that's mistaken, meaning your inner child, memorized mm -hmm. something about yourself that, that is a mistake, some, some part of you that says no to yourself, that says no to your growth on, on, on some level. And if you actually know, and, and that mistake came about because in some way, fault or no fault, who knows, who cares, love was withheld. And if you simply give that part of you love by simply, as, just as you would a child, where if the child says, I'm ugly, and you say, of course you're not. And the child says, it's not my world, and you say, of course it is. And if you just give that love to the child, that sets up an entire uh, um, uh, cosmology of healing and inviting spirit into your life that not only heals the, the mistake, that heals this mistaken memory, but that actually bring you on your path. And that, that paradigm of just, of just this part of you that's little, that learns something that's a mistake, and you guide it lovingly towards not believing that anymore, as simple as that is, that is 
the keys to the kingdom in terms of healing. That is the keys to the kingdom in terms of getting on your spiritual path and getting rid of those things, letting go of those things that block you from getting on your spiritual path. Just that simple. So that's really my, my invitation to everyone. Certainly get my book, The Shaman's Mind, uh, Who No Wisdom Will Change Your Life. life. But, uh, but if, if you just remember, if you just look at a picture of yourself when you were little, tune into a memory. You don't even have to go into a big traumatic or, or just tune into that child. Tune into what that child was learning about him or herself, learning about who they are in relationship to life and what they may have learned that is still operative now that blocks you from your growth. And it, it, just in that recognition, you'll begin the process of healing it. Absolutely. And, and you know, it's, it's, I mean, you're in Hawaii. If, if people, now I know your website is uh, www.jonathanhammond.com. Um, yep. Are you available for sessions and things like that via Zoom or whatever or Skype? Yeah, my well, you know because I'm in Hawaii, my my um, my almost my entire I have some local clients here, but my, almost my entire practice is now virtual. I'm seeing people. I see people from uh, from uh, Europe, from uh, from the from the mainland, from from all over. So yeah, JonathanHammond.com or MindBodySpiritMaui.com. Or if you just Google Jonathan Hammond, it won't be hard to find me. There's a, um, a lot of stuff online. But, yeah, I, I definitely see um, uh, see people privately, for sure. Uh, I do a lot of also uh, supervision or, or mentoring either uh, healers or people who are becoming healers. And so we actually, uh, you know, we, we will work on actually uh, um, speaking about what you're experiencing with your clients. You know, and, mm-hmm. and your professional development, that's something else that, uh, uh, that I do a lot as well. And, you know, even though I, I, live, on, I live on Maui and, 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 you know, wrote a book about Hawaiian uh, spirituality, it's very much, you know, I, I, I allow people to know that that's the philosophy that, that I'm practicing if it's effective. You know, I don't, I don't necessarily, you know, most people who come to me, they just want to get better. And they don't care where I'm getting the information, you know. And so, um, and so, sometimes, sometimes I, you know, will be really forthcoming about that this comes from, you know, the Huna philosophy. And sometimes I just, uh, I just bring about the bring about the healing or bring about bring about the help that's needed. Um, so it's very it's very universal uh, work that I do, even though it, even though it's all informed by the Hawaiian. That's not I, I don't I don't lead from there because I don't know that that's as helpful to. Uh, the people that I'm actually working with. Amazing. And you're also an interfaith minister. Where were you ordained or in what? Um... Yeah, I was. I mean... uh, that was, um, yeah, interfaith minister. That was, uh, I did a two-year seminary program. I mean, it's got to be, oh, my God, 20, 20 years, um, at least 20 years. Um, and interfaith, interfaith simply means that, that it, during the seminary we um, – we looked at all the faith traditions, all the major faith traditions, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Christianity, Buddhism, Islam, 12-step, uh, uh, shamanism, uh, uh, Hinduism, all of it. And, um, and it was about finding the universality in all of them. You know, and, and, and one of the reasons why I, I wanted to uh, translate the Hawaiian teachings is just because my brain really uh, – really operates from this place of of finding the one spirit the one spirit in in at finding that that universality in different faith traditions and mm-hmm. um i i just i love that i love i love um uh it makes people who are purists crazy um <laughs> because uh because I, I i tend to cross-reference and cross-correlate all the time but that's just how my brain works and i you know um uh, and I love finding those similarities. So yeah, that was uh, oh, geez, yeah. that was uh, many years ago. But yeah, yeah, that seminary that center, it, it's was, a wonderful program. The, was that yeah, in one New, spirit New learning City? alliance. Yeah, that's okay. in New York City, and they have a, a they they have a whole um, a whole uh, uh, like online. You, you do the whole program online. Uh huh. Yeah. Actually, actually, so, yeah, I, I did I did something similar, and um, I found. The thing that, that was most exciting to me was the reading list, and 
Uh, sure. They're, they're amazing programs. Um, I was ordained in the priesthood of Melchizedek, too, so... Um, oh, wow, okay. That, that's cool, too. It, it's, it's, there's something about, about going through a program that, that gives you the material to, to expand your own um, understanding of spirit and how it's expressed in different traditions and different places in different ways. And it, it, it makes it all the rich, more rich for you, as a, for me as a person, hopefully for everybody, that, that, that you see the, the truth in everything and you understand that, that everything, actually all major religions were all founded on the golden rule. So that you know, and, and mm-hmm. where they That's went right. with it, you know, sure. beyond that. So that so that so that there is a foundational um, stone, so to speak, with with everything, even even the Native Americans, even antiquity. It's it's you know, it's kindness and it's love. And unfortunately, so many of them have gone their own way and and you know become corporations and. Somehow the spirit just isn't as rich in them as it was when they were founded. But um, sure, sure. you know, it, it's it's important to find your source wherever it is, and 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 find the source within yourself and connect to it because it makes life so much richer. I just noticed we're almost out of time. Um, I so thank you for being here and sharing your information with us. This has been a profound time for me. And, um, oh, thank you so it. much. Mahalo. I, 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 it's been so wonderful to be here. Thank you so much. And, uh, and everyone, I, uh, I, uh, I wish you all uh, aloha ma, self-reflective love, and that you, uh, and that you uh, spend your lives moving toward that. And uh, if this hour or my book, a couple hours in my book, it can, are helpful in some way, uh, then that's wonderful, and I wrote it for you. But uh, I, I wish everyone... Just uh, the the highest blessings. Well, I I I am hopeful, very very hopeful that that people have listened and have taken notes, and and if not, of course this this will be on YouTube and it'll be on Rumble and all all over the place. So you you can always find it and, and listen to it again because I mean there's such magic in everything you do here, and it's kind of important that people understand that the, the source of, of the information is out there and available. All you need to do is reach for it and start to absorb it and start to practice it, and magic will happen in your life, which is, which is what I think is so magical. I love that part of it. Um, and, and, you know, when, when magic starts to happen, you know, understand where it's coming from. It has to come through you, and it does. So, Jonathan, thank you so much. I so appreciate your taking your time. And, see, you thought two hours was a long time, huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah, right? There it goes. Yeah. Well, many blessings. Thank you so much. And thank you so much again. And, everybody, thank you for being here tonight, for joining us. Please check out the, check out the YouTube channel, BarbaraDeLong.com, and, um, and my website. And Jonathan can be found at JonathanHammond.com. And uh, check out the material. It's well worth your time and energy and his amazing book um, so, that, so that, you know, you can understand how the magic is available to you if only you reach for it. Thanks for joining. Take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening and rest of the week. Good night now.